Hello there, welcome to Nerdier Things, and I am your host, Sir Nerdalot. So I really meant to finish this a couple weeks ago, but things happened. I think we all know what things I'm talking about. A couple weeks ago, before all the movie news was this is postponed and that's canceled, the Hollywood Reporter had dropped an exclusive article titled, New Dracula Movie in the Works as Universal Remakes Its Monsterverse. A couple main points in the article are that Karen Kasami will tackle the director's chair with Matt Manfredi and Phil Hay writing the script while Blumhouse will be producing. The article also added that Universal wants to focus more on the individual stories of the monsters rather than creating a MCU type monster verse. So, Dracula is probably the most iconic, most recognizable horror character ever. First imagined and brought to life, or should I say brought to undead, by the legendary Bram Stoker in his 1897 novel entitled Dracula. Thank you, Bram. Unfortunately, Stoker never got to see his creation reach the heights of popularity that it now enjoys. Even though his book was applauded by critics of the time, Stoker died in poverty in 1912. The popularity of the book began to soar after cinematic adaptations began being made, which all started with the silent film adaptation Nosferatu in 1922, which was directed by none other than Werner Herzog. But it was really the 1931 Bela Lugosi adaptation that is the most iconic for me. I mean, whenever I think of Count Dracula, this is the image that pops into my head. Bela Lugosi as Count Dracula. Over the years, hundreds of movies have been made about Count Dracula, even animated movies for kids. And so many legendary actors have tackled the iconic role. Christopher Lee probably had the longest run as the Count, and Leslie Nielsen probably had the funniest. But Francis Ford Coppola's adaptation sets the bar for any new Dracula movie. Gary Oldman, Winona Ryder, Keanu Reeves, and Anthony Hopkins, all in the primes of their acting careers. The set design, the cinematography, the wardrobe, all of this makes 1992 Bram Stoker's Dracula the apex of Dracula movies. So who is Karen Kasama? She is slated to direct the Dracula movie, so let's find out a little bit more about her. She made her feature film debut with the 2000 film Girl Fight, which she wrote and directed. She won a youth award at the Cannes Film Festival for the movie. Some notable follow-ups were Eon Flux and Jennifer's Body. Jennifer's Body is a movie that I greatly enjoy, but a lot of people tend to hate on a lot. Her most recent movie was a movie called Destroyer, starring Nicole Kidman. She also directed two episodes of Man in the High Castle, End of the World from Season 1, and Land of Smiles from Season 2. She's also directed an episode of HBO's new hit series, Outsider. So we have also learned that Blumhouse is going to be producing the movie which I believe is a perfect fit for Universal's MonsterVerse. The Invisible Man has been a huge success, love it or hate it, the proof is in the numbers, the movie's budget was only $7 million, and before everything hit, it had hauled in close to $100 million. Plus, Blumhouse has a long record of successful productions. Paranormal Activity, Insidious, Sinister, Lords of Salem from Rob Zombie, The Green Inferno from Eli Roth, Split, and The Visit from M. Night Shyamalan. In addition, they also brought us Jordan Peele's Get Out, which was a massive success. So if any production company has the track record to retell the iconic story of Count Dracula, I'd say it's in good and capable hands with Blumhouse. A big question is, who could play Count Dracula? In my eyes, Bill Skarsgård is the perfect choice. 
I'm sure there's a casting company out there who could find somebody better. But really though, he's played a vampire before in Hemlock Grove. He learned how to creep the hell out of us in Stephen King's It. He's an up and coming young actor. He's definitely good looking and he has that foreign air to him that the Dracula role really needs. To wrap it up, Dracula is a cinematic icon who's been around for almost 100 years. Francis Ford Coppola's 1992 Bram Stoker's Dracula is the benchmark for any new Dracula adaptation. Blumhouse is a huge positive note. They are probably the perfect fit for a Dracula movie. For me, Karen Kasami could be a question mark. She is known for more feminine centric movies, but that doesn't mean she couldn't direct a great Dracula movie. Bill Skarsgård for me is the perfect fit for Count Dracula. So thank you for joining me today. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Am I totally off base for thinking that Bill Skarsgård would be a perfect fit for Count Dracula? What, are you guys hype for a new Dracula movie? I know there's all this craziness going on and a lot of movies are being delayed and everything, but I am still really hyped for a new Dracula movie. It's been a while since we've gotten a movie adaptation. Um, let me know in the comments. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you all another time.